As a photographer, one of my favorite things to do in the shop is to build picture frames for some of the prints that I'm most proud of. I really enjoy trying to decide which combinations of wood and which patterns will bring out the best in the photo that the frame is going around. So like most of my projects, this one starts out with chewing up some rough sawn black walnut. Uh, I start out by first cutting it to rough length on the radial arm saw and then I go over to the joiner to make one face and one edge flat and 90 degrees to one another. Then I run it through the planer to get two parallel and flat faces. And once I have three sides perfect and 90 degrees from each other, then I take it to the table saw and rip them to final width and end up with a perfectly square flat board. Well, at this point I've got all my walnuts squared up and planed down and then ripped to the width that I'm going to want the final frame to be. Um, so I could just, you know, start cutting it to length and putting the miters on the corners and, and turn it into a frame, but because I just can't seem to leave well enough alone, I'm going to try to make it a little bit more decorative. I've got a... So I put a half inch uh, router bit into my router table and I'm going to router out a groove so that I can inlay some cherry into the walnut frame just to kind of make it look that much neater. And since I already have the router table set up, I figured it's a good time to uh, route in the groove for the glass and picture and backer board to sit in. Uh, so I just adjusted the fence a little bit and we're going to cut a rabbit. I've got a couple of pieces of cherry from a previous project that I decided weren't quite good enough for that purpose, um, but for this they should be just fine. They're just a little bit off color and a little bit punky, but because they don't have to do anything other than add color, they'll be just fine for this. So I start out by ripping the block of wood to the width of the rabbit in the frame. And I test fit it into the rabbit and it wasn't quite right, so I had to resize it just a little bit more. Then I take the cherry over to the bandsaw and rip off a bunch of thin strips that end up being just a little bit proud of the top of the rabbit when they're laying down in it. Then I just add some glue to the rabbit. Doesn't have to be much because it doesn't have to be strong. It just has to keep it from falling out. And then I lay the piece of cherry down on top of the glue and clamp it in place. The pieces of cherry that I had cut up for this inlay weren't quite long enough to do the entire length of each piece of the frame in one strip, so I had to basically butt up two pieces of the inlay together to make it long enough. Then once the glue is dry, I just take all of the pieces over to the drum sander and run them through until the inlay is flush with the frame. Then I decided I wanted to put a chamfer on the inside edge of the frame. This kind of opens up the frame a little bit and leads you into the picture a little bit more. Now all the frame pieces are ready to get mitered and I start out by doing one corner of each of the four pieces on the right side of my sled because at this point the length doesn't matter. Now when I move on to the other 45 degree cut, it's crucial to get the dimensions right or the artwork won't fit inside the frame. So you line up your marks perfectly with the blade and then very carefully run it through and cut your second 45 degree. After cutting it, I checked the length and I, wasn't, I was off by just a tiny, tiny fraction of an inch so I had to go back and skim just a little bit more off of it. Here I am just test fitting everything to make sure that the miters all come together correctly and that the lengths were all correct. Then I like to do all of the marking and all of the gluing from the back side. So here I marked the corners that needed to be together and then flipped everything over. It's more important to have the front side be flat than the back side, so I tend to do everything with the face of the frame down on a flat surface.
I have found that gluing a picture frame together over two different glue ups makes it easier to get the corners correct. You don't have the stress of the last piece pushing against anything and trying to knock your miters out of place. This way, if you weren't quite perfect with your mitered corners, you can actually flex and contort the frame pieces to make them line up better for you over the course of the two separate glue ups. I like using these little spring loaded corner clamps. They work really well to hold the very corners of frames together. So once the first glue up is dry, then you just repeat the process on the second one, but you know that you're not going to knock those first two corners out of whack. Even going through all that work to try to make everything perfect, sometimes it doesn't always end up perfect. I'm mixing some two-part epoxy together with some fine black walnut sawdust to make a paste to fill in a little crack that I had in one of the four corners. Just have to smear it on the crack and it'll sort of ooze down into the crack. Once the epoxy is fully hardened, I just sand it back to flat while I'm going through the finish sanding for the rest of the frame. And if you look closely, you can't even tell that there was ever a crack there to begin with. So I flip the frame over and add my brand to the back of it. And then it's time to add a finish. I like to use tongue oil on, on most of my stuff, but especially on picture frames. I think it gives a really good natural look to the wood. And it's also pretty durable and pretty easy to use. This particular brand, you just wipe on and let it sit for about 10 minutes and come through and buff it. Then you let it dry for a day and you come back and you do the next coat. I think I ended up doing three coats on this frame. Now I'm just going through and marking out the locations for all the hardware on the back side of the frame. And then I go back through and drill pilot holes in all of those locations. This is a piece of anti-glare and UV resistant plexiglass that I had cut just for this project. And I peeled a protective paper off trying not to put any fingerprints on the glass. That way I don't have to do any more cleanup later. Then I just put the mat and the frame in place and set it back down and start installing the hardware. I take these little brass hangers that I found at the local hardware store and put just a little bend in them. That way they apply pressure to the back of the frame and hold it in more securely. And then I just go through and install all of the brass pieces around the rest of the frame. Then after attaching the picture hanger hardware, I can put the picture wire through it and twist it into place. And I just figure out the correct length, cut the piece of wire, and attach the other end. I tend to go a little bit overkill on my hardware for picture frames. I think this whole thing maybe weighs seven or eight pounds, and all of the hardware I have is rated for 35 pounds, so I know this is not coming off the wall. And now it's finished. I finally get to see what my print looks like inside this frame. This is a sunrise photo from the top of a mountain about a half hour from my house. Time to hang it up on the wall and you can hear I've got my boys here to help me. My youngest is on the floor yelling at his toys and my oldest is sitting close by telling me how to do it. And there we have it, a black walnut picture frame with a nice cherry inlay around a matted photo of a sunrise from the top of a mountain.